Play Your Role is a proud affiliate of Only Crits Dice. Check the link in the description for beautiful and high quality hard edge metal dice as well as other tabletop products. So this video topic has actually been requested a lot, but the real specific reason that I'm making it actually is for my wife. She really wanted me to be able to talk about this character archetype and specifically a shining example of the archetype, which I will be getting to in a moment. But the archetype that I'm talking about today is the insane character, the crazy one, the not mentally stable one, basically the one that leans into somebody who is not right in the head. There are a lot of characters that play into this, but the more intense you get with it, the more difficult they can be to play at your table. And my wife really likes playing those characters, and clearly a lot of you do, since it has been one of my most requested videos since starting this series. But it's still a very difficult archetype to play, so let's talk about that. Okay, so why is this archetype difficult to play? I'm sure it's pretty obvious, but I'm still gonna lay it out just to make sure we're all on the same page. Truthfully, the reason it's difficult to play is because when you play an insane character, somebody who's just that out there, it upsets the status quo. It makes it very difficult for them to play with the party. And the reason for that is because they ignore societal norms, and that can be a huge detriment. And why is that? Well, societal norms are how we build how we deal with different people. It's how we understand how to handle different relationships. How do I communicate with this person? How do I communicate with that one? Well, we all work under the same rules because we all know the societal norms. If somebody goes against that, it can become incredibly difficult to be able to actually communicate with them and collaborate with them. And if that becomes the case, it could be so difficult to have somebody like that at your party. And so if you have somebody who consistently goes against societal norms, who consistently causes problems, who consistently pushes back against what we expect, it can be incredibly difficult because D&D is a collaborative role play game. Collaboration is necessary. People who have watched my channel for a while know I say that consistently because it remains the truth. It remains incredibly important. And so when you play a character who has some form of being crazy, psychotic, and I do use that term very loosely because it can be really insensitive if I'm not careful with it, but basically somebody who pushes against societal norms in general, they can be difficult to deal with at the table. Now there are a lot of different things that a lot of people talk about when they talk about crazy characters. You guys think I'm And I've noticed two different types mainly from the comments on my videos. One are people talking about people who generally have a mental illness, something they have to push back against, and that's a very sensitive topic. One that I don't know a lot about, so I can't say a lot without being really insensitive. The other is, well, it's an archetype I really don't like. It's the lol so random character, the one who does random things because haha, I'm so crazy. What? The game! What game? You lose, lol, I'm so random. Uh. And uh, people can enjoy those characters, don't get me wrong. They can appreciate them and like them, and I've even played some NPCs who are a little like that, but for a long-term campaign, I just don't find those characters very entertaining to see. But there's a specific character who I think embodies the archetype that I want to talk about today, and the one that caused me to make this video. That would be Jinx from Arcane. Now, I've already talked about Arcane in one of my previous videos. You can watch it up in one of those corners. I'm not sure which one it's going to pop up in. But the reason I want to talk about Jinx is because I think she really exemplifies a good example of what this type of archetype that a lot of people want to play is. And it's the character who is not quite right in the head, has something else going on, but is still trying to move towards a goal. And again, I will re-emphasize, I do not know a lot about this topic, so I'm trying not to be insensitive. I'm specifically trying to talk about what it's like to play this kind of character at a table without being problematic. However, Jinx does not work with group. In fact, for the entire course of the entire show, she is an example of somebody who fights against everybody. She is an antagonist to literally everyone. Even the people who are trying to root for her, she ends up causing problems with and betraying. She is a loose cannon in the fullest term. Actually, you know what, shoot, loose cannon is the exact term I'm looking for. All right, loose cannon is the title of the video. I'm sure everybody else who already saw the title, they know that, but for me, this is news. I, loose cannon is the term I'm going with here. But a loose cannon is somebody who makes decisions based off of things that other people wouldn't. They're unpredictable, they're erratic, they're, some might call them crazy. They are all over the place, and they can be really difficult because they don't work with the party. They want to do what they want to do, and I will give a perfect example of this. Over the course of Thanksgiving, I went to go spend time with my sister, and we all played a bunch of one shots over and over again, and one of those one shots we were doing Doing a heist and my wife decided to play a character based off of Jinx, even down to the name Jinx. And at a certain part, she decided the best way to cause a distraction was to toss a grenade at somebody at the party. Obviously, this didn't go super well as planned and everything went off the rails. Now, every single player at the table was able to work with this. They were able to figure it out and make sure it worked with what we were trying to do. And the DM, my sister, did an amazing job at keeping the story moving forward without this totally derailing anything. And that is just really something that needs to be celebrated 
you because that was a huge thing that we were all able to keep that task on story. But that type of character, the one who's going to be an oddball, a loose cannon, really does cause problems with the party if you're not careful about it. So how do you play that at the table? Well, one thing I would do is make sure that you've discussed with the rest of your party. Obviously, any archetype I talk about that is difficult to play at the table, the first step you should do is just talk about them at session zero. Make sure the rest of the party is okay with it. Talk with the table. Make sure everybody understands what's going on. But then there's a few different other things you want to do. When people want to play loose cannons, they want to be able to do things to shake things up, to cause issues, to intentionally inflict conflict on the story. And I know that sounds negative, but it's not. That is a very entertaining character to play. It causes things to always be exciting. It causes the story to move forwards if you do it correctly. And most importantly, it keeps a cautious party from never getting involved. See, that is something that I've seen a lot. I have two different groups, and one of them can be very, very cautious and not involve themselves in things. But if they have somebody who is chaotic, who moves forward, it causes things to not stagnate. It causes things to continue to push. But at the same time, at the exact opposite side of the coin, a chaotic character can easily prevent that from happening, from immediately causing things to screech to a halt. So how do you prevent that from happening? How do you move the story forward instead of backwards? Well, you look for moments where conflict should occur. And I know that's a little weird for me to say, but let me lay it out for you. Say you're in the middle of negotiations. You're trying to keep peace between two different cities. You're trying to make sure that a small war that's been going on no longer continues. And that is central to the quest. In that moment, that is not the time to do something chaotic because it will not keep the story moving forward if you disrupt those relations. Yeah, sure, the DM could probably work with it. Now you've got a totally new quest of trying to be able to prevent this all out war that's just occurred, but it didn't move the story forward. It just caused it to shift gears on something that you were about to move past. And now the rest of the party will constantly be working to fix an issue they know you caused. And if they know you caused it, it will always be in the back of the parties and the players' heads to ask why they're keeping this person around. Why are we keeping this person who is intentionally causing issues and causing us to stop? So that is a moment where you should not cause problems. It doesn't mean your character has to change. It doesn't mean you have to act out of character. Your character may still want to do loose cannon things, be a little chaotic. But there's a few things you could do. One, you could look at the table, not your party, the table, and say, hey, my character is probably gonna cause issues here. Is there a way we can prevent them from being in the negotiation? You're not acting out of character. You're telling out of character to your party. Maybe we should fix this. Let's stop an issue before it happens. And the other thing you can do is find an internal reason of why your character wouldn't act this way. One thing I can easily think of is if the character is in the negotiations, find a reason for them to be distracted. Yes, they would love to cause something chaotic, but there's this butterfly that keeps flying around and you're fascinated by that and you just keep looking at it and maybe you do keep on getting up and trying to catch the butterfly which would disrupt things sure but not in the way that anything else would in the way that it would cause a war do you see what i'm saying here you have to be able to know when to be a loose cannon you still can be one but do it when it will push the story forwards a great example is again my wife and the current campaign we're running it they ran into a group of people where things were about to go down there basically there was a hostage situation with a jester and some rats and a giant mutant rat it's a long story. They were going to take a long time trying to sneak in and figure out what to do. My wife's character ran in and immediately shot one of the rats. She knew there was a hostage situation, she acted. It caused combat to happen immediately. And there were players at the table whose characters wanted to be cautious, but the players were enraptured with the fact that they got to just run in and start wrecking shop. They didn't have to hesitate. They didn't have to go into the cautious sort of mindset their characters would because they were just able to run in and do it. And that is fun. So you have to know when to be a loose cannon and when to find an excuse not to be. You do not have to act out of character, but you have to find an excuse of why your character wouldn't act that way in that moment. It is really important. And the last part of playing a loose cannon that can really cause a lot of issues is they tend to be a little one note. They're just chaotic. They're just a problem. They're just an issue. You have to figure out why it is. What sets them off? What is the reason they would act up in certain situations? And it's really important to know that because then you can communicate that to the rest of the table and they will also know what's gonna set off your character and they can act around that. And if a situation happens where you act up in a very not good situation where you actually do bring things to a little bit of a halt and cause some conflict, they'll be aware that it was going to happen. It will make sense to them and won't be out of the blue just because you wanted to be lol so random. 
You have to have that understanding. Again, we'll go back to Jinx. The things that set her off were magical explosions, reminders of her family, things that would cause her to spiral further and further downhill. And those things would inevitably set her off every single time when a magical explosion happened, when her family showed up, anything like that, it would send her into the spiral. And that was really important because it gave depth to her character. It gave a reason of why she was doing things. It made sense when she did act up in those ways. And it's very important for your table to know that as well so they can work with that. They can understand it. They can predict it. And more importantly, they can play into it. Because the last part of playing a loose cannon that can be really difficult is your character won't have any connection to the party. They're just random. They're just there. They're just a problem. But if you can create a connection with your party, if they can understand why your character struggles in these ways, they can begin to be involved in your character and they could be much less one note, much less chaotic, and more of just somebody who genuinely needs help. And that is a compelling story. And if you could do all that, you should be able to play a loose cannon just fine at your table. So go out into the world, make it your own, you beautiful bastards. Don't forget to have a great day and never forget to play a role. Thank you. Come again.